Hello there. My name is Miles Pitcher. This is my channel, Mortgages by Miles. I often, especially in this market, get the question from clients asking, hey, I have a lot of equity in my home. I would like to access that equity. What is the best way to do that? So today we're going to talk through a home equity line of credit. I'm not saying it's the best option out there, but it's an option you need to be aware of. I'm going to give you the pros, the cons. I'm going to give you a few words of caution. And I'm also going to let you know how you can evaluate if this is the right move to make. Let's get started. First of all, I'm going to pause and say, hey, if you would help me out and subscribe to my channel, that would be really cool. And I'd appreciate it. But what is a HELOC? Today, we're talking about second position HELOCs. That means that you have a first mortgage in place. And in this market, you probably have like a killer rate on your current mortgage, a two, a three, a four, even a 5% rate. And you want to keep that, but you want to put another mortgage or lien or loan behind it, the HELOC, to access your equity. We want to leave that mortgage as is. Okay. Now, I do have a loan product where it is a first position HELOC. It's called the all-in-one loan. I'll put a link in the comments and in the description where you can go learn about that. But today we're specifically talking about leaving your first mortgage alone and putting a new second mortgage. The rates on these HELOCs are generally following what prime rate does. Okay, and it's going to be what we call prime plus. And the prime plus means that you'll take the prime rate You'll add in a margin to it, and that's what your rate will be and the interest will be charged at. You may be able to find someone who offers an intro rate, but then after six months, the rate's going to jump up to something prime plus. Okay, We are typically dealing with these on primary residences. You can do them on a second home. Investment properties, we're not going to dive into today. There are some options there. Reach out to me and I'll talk to you individually about investment property options in accessing your equity. Reasons we're seeing that makes sense to do a HELOC is consolidating your debt. Okay, If you have credit cards, car loans, student loans, or solar panels, maybe a HELOC makes sense to consolidate all that debt in. We have seen a massive increase in consumer debt. Uh, it really is starting to uh, saddle some of our clients in their ability to make payments. Consolidating that down with a HELOC could be a good option. Clients want to do remodels to their home. Another great way of accessing that. I'm a fan of that because when you do the remodel or build an addition, you are increasing the value of your home. Uh, other people are grabbing these to do investments, to acquire additional real estate. Um, another smart move to make. The other cool thing I love about a HELOC is maybe it's a delayed use, meaning you're not quite ready to pull the trigger on doing the remodel to your house or buy that investment property, or you want an emergency fund access here. I love the HELOC because you are only paying interest on what's drawn out. So if you put it in place and you sit on it for a year before you use it, that's okay. It's not really hurting you at all because you haven't drawn on it. So here's how we evaluate the HELOC a little bit. It's not a complete view, but it'll give you an idea. First of all, we weigh out is a home equity line of credit going to be the right move versus doing a full cash out refinance where we replace your first mortgage, draw cash out. Um, we look at that. We help you weigh the options there. Um, yes, you lose that incredible rate you have on your first mortgage right now, but we take that option and we compare it against what we call a blended rate. That's where we take your current first mortgage and the new rate on the HELOC, and based on how much you're borrowing, we calculate what the blended rate is. If that blended rate is better than what a full-blown cash-out refinance would be, then yeah, the HELOC makes sense. There's other factors that go into it, but it, understanding what the blend rate is will help you in evaluating it. It also helps you in deciding whether I'm going to roll in some of my credit card debt, student loans, car payments into that HELOC to get them paid off. The other consideration is the net cash flow. So maybe you have a lot of credit card debt that you're forking out $1,000 a month on. 
Okay. We want to see if we roll that into the HELOC, what your new cash flow is like, and maybe it's only a couple hundred dollars now. That's awesome. We like to help a client build a plan then that that extra 800 that they're not now not spending on credit cards, we love them to go and apply that as extra pay down on the HELOC. Some of the pros to HELOC are obviously accessing the equity in your home. Flexible use of funds. The bank is not going to dictate to you how you use your funds. Okay. Um, it may also help you lower your interest rate depending on what we're paying off, right? Some credit cards are crazy expensive right now, 25 to 35% in the interest rates on those. A HELOC is going to save you a lot of money. Um, tax deductibility. So generally, first mortgage, first position loans may be tax deductible. HELOCs, you'll need to talk to your CPA tax advisor on this, but if they're being used to improve your home, you may be able to write off some of the interest. Variable interest rate. So this can be a pro and a con. It means the interest rate can adjust on these from month to month. Where we're at right now and where we believe rates are going, you could have the rate moving down on you and improving over the next few years. So that could be a total advantage to you. Some of the cons, you have this home, now there is greater risk that if something happens to you and your job, your home could be foreclosed on. There's another lender now. I know that's an extreme case, but you need to be aware of it. Again, we talked about variable interest rates. That means rates could also move up on you. The closing costs and fees, there, there are going to be, again, closing costs with the HELOC. Um, depending on how big your HELOC is will depend on how big the closing costs are. Potential overspending. This is one I'm super careful of with clients. If there are clients that tend to be irresponsible with their money, running up credit cards, maxing them out, the, the HELOC may not be so wise for them in that they could overspend and totally max out that HELOC and then they're in just, they're just in a tough spot. Um, part of that is that a HELOC is going to only require of you during the start period of a interest only payment. Let me pause right here and talk about the structure a little bit. Maybe I forgot to mention this, is that in a HELOC, you're going to have a draw period. Typically, it is the first 10 years. Okay, that's where you can put money in and pay down the loan, and you can draw it back out when you need it. That's really nice. At the end of 10 years, the bank will typically freeze or stop the draws from happening, and then they take whatever loan balance there is and amortize it or figure out the payments for the next 20 years. And then you just have to make the payments to get it paid off. Okay. Um, the overspending part is I hate to see people who max out their HELOCs and then are just barely making the interest only payment every single month. You still have to qualify for this mortgage. If we are rolling in debts, it does make some sense and it helps in qualifying. The other part is market fluctuations. And what I mean by that is that um, your home could go down in value. Um, we don't, real estate has been very, very solid for us and continues, and we believe will continue to appreciate, but there may be some times where the value comes down on your home. Let me give you a word of caution here as you think about doing a HELOC. Number one, be fully aware it's a variable rate, okay? Um, have a plan on how you're going to get this paid off. Um, if you're drawing it out, you need to have a plan so that you can aggressively pay it down and get it paid to zero. Um, flexible use of funds, meaning there's no one watching you on how you use your funds. It's kind of the overspending thing. Uh, we talked about the home going down in value. Back in 2008, 2009, uh, when the recession hit, we saw this happen quite a bit where people had HELOCs and the banks called up and said, hey, we are freezing your line of credit, you are, your HELOC, you are now no longer able to draw out any additional funds. And that, that was a big deal. Or maybe they came back and said, your $100,000 line of credit HELOC is now only $50,000. Okay. 
I had clients at that time who had sunk in all, all their free money into the HELOC and all of a sudden they no longer had access to those funds to draw back out. So just be aware that in a, a spot where things are getting rough for banks, they may freeze or reduce your HELOC. It's written into the language of the agreement that they can do that. Um, they also can call the line due. Um, be aware that that's there. Um, it's been a long time since we've seen any of that happen. It was back in 08, 09, and that was a pretty serious housing crisis at that time. Please feel free to reach out to us and let us know if we can answer any questions, help you on a HELOC, or even evaluate if it makes sense. Thanks for watching this video.